Welcome to this week's video. It's obviously flavor of the month at the moment, so I'm doing some more fine art landscape or seascape photography. And I'm photographing a boat wreck today, but I've got a question, I've got a burning question. If you had the choice, what would you rather do? Photograph what you see or photograph what you want to see? That's a burning question. I'll explain it all in a second. Hi guys and welcome to this week's video. I feel I need to qualify that statement right from the get-go. So, in an unusual way, I'm going to show you the end results right at the beginning of the video. Then you can make an informed decision whether you want to watch the rest of this video based on my theory of what would you prefer to photograph, what you see or what you would like to see. So, this is what I'm talking about. This is what I can see. This is the photograph I can see. But in my mindset, I know once I post process the image, I know how it's going to look. And in my mindset, this is what I would like to see. This is the final image. So a lot of this will depend on your ability as a post processor by using programs like Photoshop. Uh, I'm only saying Photoshop because that's all I use. Clearly there's plenty of other bits of software out there. But anyway, cutting through all the red tape, what it basically means is if you're a proficient post processor, then you can have a different outlook on what you actually see. And what you physically photograph is not necessarily what you'll end up with. If you want or don't want to photograph what you can actually see. It's all subjective. I'm not suggesting everybody has to do it this way, but it certainly works when it comes down to things like genres, like fine art photography. I'm at Pin Mill at the moment, and it's full of boat wrecks everywhere, and it's cluttered. It's a boat wreck boat yard. Now, I can come here and photograph what I see. That's not really a problem. Or I can come to a place like this and try and look at it in a different light. What can I do in post-production? Where's my skills in post-production? How will this image that I'm about to take look and translate once I've post-processed my image, images? So really, that's the gist of this video. What a fantastic place though. Once again, this is, this is a place called Pin Mill and it's just full of character and boat wrecks. Oh, I tell you what, there are some stories here to be told. tell you what's really weird is about bragging about how good a picture is at the beginning of the video before you've even captured anything <laughs> now the pressure's really on let me give you a, a timeline it's 25 to 11 and high tide isn't until 12 o'clock clearly the tide is coming in at a rapid rate of knots 
and even I am very surprised by how far up this tide is already. I didn't anticipate the tide to be up to here until it was high tide. So when I came here last night for a quick recce, the very first time by the way I came was last night. When I came here last night for a recce, the tide clearly was out. So all you can try and do is judge how far the tide is out and imagine how far the tide is going to be in based on the height of the high tide. That's a mouthful, isn't it? So my intention now, although you know my intention because you've seen just one picture, but now I've scouted out this place my intention is obviously fine art it's more than likely it's going to be black and white surprisingly clearly it's going to be a long shutter speed shot hence the reason I'm stood here now waiting for high tide but I'm looking for possibly a full landscape sweep of all of the boat wrecks so in other words pretty much photographing what I can see pretty much but then I want to isolate maybe one or two subjects in the frame and manipulate them. Um, whether it, rem it, it means that I remove objects around it just to make a single object stand out. In other words, that's what I want to see. Or what I possibly might end up doing is making um, a composite image. I might go further, about 50 yards to the right hand side of the these boat wrecks there's nothing in the sea at all apart from sea so I might go down there and actually take a picture of nothing then come back up here photograph the whole scene and I might then end up taking bits and pieces and adding them as a composite to the image that I'll take 50 yards down whereby there's nothing else in the frame now clearly there's lots of other things to take into consideration especially as a fine art landscape photographer you've got loads of boats and land and everything in the background and clearly i don't want any of that in my final images this is a handful but isn't it exciting it's exciting it's almost like becoming if you photograph what you want to see it's 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 in the realms of becoming a digital artist and I don't really want to get down the realms of should you or shouldn't you, I'm not really interested. To me, this is a challenge for me and I'm going to see how that challenge plays out. Not sure if I've mentioned where I am, but I'm in a place called Pin Mill. P-I-N-M-I-L-L, two separate words, and I'm on the southeast coast of England. And I've seen a few photographs from down here and again, I just needed to come down and check it out for myself. These boat wrecks are delectable really 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 nice there's a for sale sign on that one there <laughs> well, I think you can barely make out a telephone number we should ring that number and see how much they want for that boat exactly an hour before high tide and uh, what a fantastic day but very sadly it's just started to rain a bit so just after 11 o'clock in the morning and there is no no wind to talk of no breeze the temperature is just perfect this is one of these lucky lucky days uh, where all the stars have aligned for landscape photography even though it's in the middle of the day which is really bizarre uh, of course it doesn't really matter when you're shooting black and white especially when you're shooting fine art landscape photography where by you end up manipulating the image so much shooting in the middle of the day really really isn't a problem but 
now it's just started to rain it's raining and as much as it's not bucketing down and as much as because the wind is fairly slight uh, we don't have to worry about driving rain into the lens and into the filters which is a, a which can be a pain in the ass as we all know yeah so another little challenge but these are just the standard challenges that are there to face us as landscape photographers so that first shot is actually looking quite nice f16 iso 50 with a two minute exposure and what i'm now going to do is i've just closed my aperture just by one third so i've gone from f16 to f18 just because i want to try and um, shoot this over a four minute exposure to see if i can get a bit more movement in the clouds so i'm now shooting at iso 50 f18 with a four minute exposure and i think that should be perfect and then what I'm going to do is with my camera at exactly the same height I'm simply going to walk 50 yards to the right hand side and aim out in exactly the same way I'm doing now but where there are no boats and the reason why I'm doing that is because I'm giving myself options in other words I want to clean this image up and just leave one boat and if I if I'm struggling to do that and I'm giving myself the option of taking a blank canvas by simply moving 50 yards down there to the right hand side if I can I might not be able to because the tide seems to be coming in more to the right than it is here so that might not be possible but uh, I'll know in one and a half minutes time from now I know great the rain is getting heavier and I didn't bring a coat pre-planning and all that In case you were interested, these boats here are just simply scrap boats. The owners of these boats, when they finish with them, would wait till there was a very high tide and ground them up here, take everything of value off the boats and just walk away, let nature take its course. And that practice apparently continues today. It's a bit weird, isn't it? How weird is that? <laughs> 